Steve Stapleton. Um, I manage the. Um, sorry, thank you. Connection drops out. It comes back pretty quickly. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to start again, having had a couple of problems there. So um, I'm Steve Stapleton. I manage the Open Nottingham um, program at the University of Nottingham in the UK. Um, Open Nottingham is a program I've worked to um, help staff and students publish, uh, find, reuse open educational resources. Um, it's been running for a few years now. Uh, the university is very um, bought into the idea of open access for research and open access for um, teaching and learning resources. And Open Nottingham is really at the moment focused on the, the teaching and learning side of things. Um, so the presentation today is going to focus on two of the things that make up the Open Nottingham suite of tools. So the main presentation will talk about the expert search engine, uh, which is a search engine that provides access to open educational resources from um, providers from around the globe. And also, I'll be talking about the expert attribution service, which is an extension to, to the um, expert search engine, which focuses on um, helping people to find um, and use um, images that are licensed under Creative Commons, um, and also uh, an even um, more up-to-date extension, which allows people to upload their own images and have a Creative Commons um, attribution statement embedded as part of the image. So that's going to be the main focus of the, of the presentation. It's more of a demo, really. I'll show you the website. Um, I'll give you the URLs, and then you can have a play around around with it if you if you want to. Um, and I think it probably makes sense um, for a little bit of context just to give you some background about um, open educational resources at Nottingham, uh, which will then allow you to understand why we're trying to focus on the search engine and the attribution tool and, and various, other, various other things that, that we're um, working on at Nottingham at the moment. So I hope that's okay. Um, if you do have questions as we go through, feel free to, to put your hand up. I'm more than happy for people to kind of get involved if you, if you want to. Um, I'll be giving out the URLs for the web tour, so you feel free to, to follow along. Um, and I'll, I'll demo a few of the things as, we, as we're going through as well. So feel free to chip in if you want to. Uh, okay, so a little bit of context which I think could be be useful is that um, open educational resources at, at Nottingham or open courseware at Nottingham has been running for a number of years now. Um, so we uh, launched our UNOW site, which is where we release our um, open courseware, open educational resources back in 2007. Um, we, were, we were joined the Open Courseware Consortium in 2008, uh, which has been, been great and really happy to be um, part of that um, project and, and work alongside a number of the, the other providers and the, the uh, consortium, so that's been fantastic. Um, and really, it grew quite slowly in the early days. It was um, quite organic. Um, people that worked with the learning technologies team in which I work were sometimes interested in, in making content. And then really, that's how we expanded into releasing open content. And we talked to them about wanting to release it openly and started to get the ball rolling in, in that way. Um, in 2009, we received from JISC and Higher Education Funding, which are two funding councils in the UK, um, to run a, a year-long project called Berlin, which um, really refocused open access, um, open educational resources at Nottingham, allowed us to bring in uh, a couple of staff members to work on it full time, and that project saw us release 360 credits of um, Nottingham's content as open educational resources, and really helped us to engage with staff and, and, and get the ball rolling around OER. we are. Um, so much so that in 2010 we launched the Open Nottingham program, which is a self-funded program by the, the university, and it's really focused on helping staff to um, publish open resources helping staff and students to find, reuse um, open resources, but also, which is most relevant to today's presentation, to build and disseminate open source tools that help people to um, find, use, and build op open educational resources. Um, so um, in PowerPoint, the slide kind of flies around a little bit, so, um, but I, I forgot that it was going onto a whiteboard, so it's kind of a static slide. But these are some of the tools and services, and I'll, I'll just talk around them. So there's the UNOW site. Um, there's also Zerti Online Toolkits, which has been a really successful piece of open source software that allows non-technical developers to um, quickly and easily author um, learning content and interactive learning content and publish it to the web. Um, Expert, which has been around now for a number of years. Um, Nottingham's also got a YouTube education channel, an iTunes U account. Uh, we've just started to release um, iBooks and open eBooks. So we're really quite engaged with, with uh, and
Is that any better? Can people hear me now? Yeah, sorry about that. It must be something to do with be, being dropped out and having to re restart everything. So apologies. Um, I don't know if you heard my first apology, so I'll say it again. Sorry, it's, 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 um, my system is dropping out. I hope it doesn't happen again. But if it does, I do apologise. And it seems to be coming up um, quite quickly. So sorry, I'll, I won't keep saying sorry because by the time I keep saying that, I'll drop out again. So I'll, I'll just move on. Um, so at Nottingham, um, we're it's strategic open access and OER activities at Nottingham. We now have um, the expansion of our UNOW Open Courseware initiative stated within our strategic plan. So that's been fantastic to point academic staff towards that if they're asking the question about um, why can we get involved in this? Is this something that's sanctioned to really open up our content and reuse other people's stuff? So we're able to point them at um, a strategic plan, which has been fantastic since 2010 to be able to do that. And there's a number of reasons beyond the, the social responsibility angle where, where it sits within the strategic plan. We also see big relevance to um, our excellence in education objective, which is around the student experience. So whether that be staff using open resources to um, enhance the student experience or promoting open access resources directly to students, we see that as a, as a key driver to being, being involved in open access. Uh, promotional opportunities is something that we talk readily about. So um, we try to promote the, the schools that make resources available, the individual academic academics, uh, the university. So we really see that as um, a way of engaging with open access, both in terms of, kind of promoting the people that do it, but also showcasing the institutions, teaching and learning resources. Um, so much so that we, we do things like making um, OER available directly to our online prospectuses, so that prospective students might be able to get a sense of um, the types of teaching resources they'll be exposed to when, when they join the university. And um, I'm not sure there's too much evidence out there beyond um, distance learning, open university models that prove that that does drive people to register for courses, but that's something that we're exploring at the moment. Um, that's available for a few schools at the moment in, in terms of a pilot, but we'll be looking to expand that and, and gather data. Um, internationalization is, is one of the key drivers as well. We've got campuses in China and Malaysia, so one of the um, fundamental reasons for getting involved in, in, in OER was really the sharing of resources across those campuses. And we've seen case study examples where, where that's worked successfully and where um, students that are um, registered at our cam campus in China have used resources in the UK uh, from different subject areas to help their own studies and, and to get a sense of the university as a whole, which, is, which has been great for, for that particular strategy. Um, and then cost efficiencies as well. We've seen case study examples where people have reused open resources to save time. Um, obviously, there's a big debate about kind of how much cost efficiencies can be leveraged versus learning to use OER and, and those types of debates, which we're, we're engaged in. But we, we've, we've definitely seen examples of where staff have been able to show big time savings in terms of, of reusing third party content. So for Nottingham, they're, they're really the, the main reasons why we engage and we go out and talk to staff and students about those things on a, on a regular basis. So what do, does OER support or what support does it have at the university? Um, we really did a, um, a top down, bottom back on so I've just seen someone say that I've just seen somebody say there's no sound but I think it should be yeah cheers it's just it's just come back on now sorry at least it's taking just a few seconds when it when it comes back so um, I'll, I'll just get I'll just crack on with this um, so it's got senior support our vice chancellor is highly supportive of the initiative you put a podcast together a few years ago um, saying talking about the benefits of making content available openly uh, which was fantastic again when we were getting questions about um, from staff members is this something that's got senior backing? Is, is this a priority for the university? We're able to point them towards the vice chancellor talking about why um, he thought it was a good idea. So that, that was really a, a, um, a positive thing for us to do. And we, we work on a, a, an opt-in basis, so we don't mandate anybody make their content available. Uh, we go out to talk to, to schools and individuals about why we think it's a good thing to do. Um, and then schools and individuals can decide for themselves whether to get involved, how much content to make available, and we support them in that process. Um, there's a number of academic boards across the institution that look after the faculties. Um, each of those boards have signed off that their faculties can get involved in open access publication. Um, and last academic year, we received over 1,500 credits worth of content to be released as open educational resources. So we feel we've really got quite a mature publication 
the publication process, so much so that we've now got around 70% of schools engaged in an open access publication. Some of those are people that have just given us one or two things. Um, other schools are, have um, signed off en masse and have given us a um, significant amount of content. So there is a difference between different schools engaging at different levels, but we're definitely seeing a um, momentum shift towards more schools getting involved and providing more detailed content. And we've now got a, um, a target of releasing 3,600 credits of open content by 2015, so have the equivalent of 10 undergraduate programs released openly um, online, which is a, a good target for us to be, be aiming towards. Okay, so I talked about this a little bit earlier, and one of the tactics that we try to do in terms of trying to drive uptake in this is to put things into mainstream systems. So this is our uh, one of our prospectus pages where you can see that um, in the bottom right, people are able to click experience our teaching and then browse back to downloading brochures or visiting school websites. So we've tried to keep it all, all lined up. Um, we also try and support study, so as well as aiming at prospective students and staff, we've also got information available in study guides for students that are available with other information around library services, so how people might make, make the most of accessing open educational resources from, from the student perspective. And then really that background stuff brings us to what I'm going to talk about most for um, the, the next little bit of the, the session, which are two tools and services that really um, feed into um, open educational resources at Nottingham. The first is the expert search engine. Now, Expert um, started life back in 2009 as part of where we received some rapid innovation funding from JISC, um, which is supposed to be kind of quick projects, trying to um, work on concepts, get them to um, add into um, the world relatively quickly, so we received some funding to do that. Um, and over the last few years, back in the, under control of the Open Nottingham project, having got that seed funding, experts now have grown to have something like 325,000 um, learning resources available within the search engine. So we now think, apart from iTunes U, we think it's now the largest collection of, of OER in the world. Um, so it's really grown in, in the last few years to be quite a significant resource. And, and the way it works, it, this looks a little bit complicated, is it, it isn't. So uh, it's just quite a, a good way of explaining it. The expert sits in, in, in the middle, really, and it's a search. Okay, sorry, uh, dropped out again, back again. Um, so the way this works is that Expert sits in the middle and it isn't a repository, so that's important to say um, that it's just a search engine. And the way that it works is it's harvesting RSS feeds. So if you can imagine that you've got these higher education institutions or it could be any organization in the world that's making and learning content openly available, um, if they've got sites or uh, repositories that have RSS feeds, uh, what Expert is doing is it's, it's um, getting those feeds and it's um, using them as a way of providing links back to the host institution. So in Expert, really what we're talking about holding is some description of the resource, a link back to the resource, and some information about the types of license that resources are available under. So really Expert is, is a search engine or a gateway to content that's stored in other people's repositories or on other people's sites. And it does that through using RSS feeds. So in the early days, um, one of the, the developers that kind of looked after Expert um, really went out there and pulled in a lot of RSS feeds for a lot of content. And now really what we're doing is just accepting updated content, automated updated content through those RSS feeds. So as an institution adds more content, um, Expert is able to harvest that content. And we've got sites in there, such as Durham in the UK. Um, I think we've got some open um, courseware consortium feeds as well. So it's really designed to help people go to one place to search um, multiple repositories. So it's offering that type of experience rather than going to a, num a number of them. And I'll kind of demo, demo it in a second. I guess some of you are probably looking at it already. Um, so as well as trying to push this out to staff and, and find ways to allow staff to use open resources, we also work directly with students. We try to work quite closely with the Students' Union, who promoted Expert um, directly to, to the student population. So that's been really useful to, to make that connection with the Students' Union. And in addition to Expert, which I will we'll demo live in a second, we also did a, did a, sur a staff survey 
um, which showed the main barriers in terms of open educational resources were, and using them, finding them, and publishing them were time constraints and fear over copyright infringement and ownership and legal barriers. So, um, so I can see someone saying, "What is H E E Higher Education Institution?" Sorry, I should have spelt spelt that out, um, Jim. So H E I is um, Higher Education Institution. Um, okay, so in the survey, it, it seemed that time constraints, fear over copyright infringement, ownership and uh, legal barriers were some of the main barriers to people engaging with open access. So really what we're trying to do is build tools that help um, our staff overcome um, barriers and also as a knock-on effect to that and make those tools available to the world so that wider Im impact can be made, made from them. So as well as expert which searches for learning resources, um, we also put together this expert attribution service which is really a search engine for images, um, sounds and videos and this is looking solely for Creative Commons licensed resources, um, images and, and um, sounds and videos. For images at the moment it's just searching Flickr as that provided one of the, the easiest starting points and safest way to be sure that we were finding only Creative Commons licensed images. I'll, I'll demo all this live in a second. Um, so expert attribution is the extension to expert that really focuses on helping people find Creative Commons licensed images. So again, this, this is just a few slides I put together in case uh, the live demo didn't work, but um, I'll demo all this live in a second. But you can search for images, it pulls, the, pulls them in you find the image that you want and then you've got a few of these options here to grab the image with an embedded license attribution statement at the bottom which you'll see in a second. Um, so it's something uh, along the lines of here which I'll demo live where it's adding the Creative Commons license. Okay, back again. Um, every five minutes or so, at least, at least it's consistent. <laughs> okay, so th this, this is the idea and um, here are some URLs. So what I'll do is I think uh, that's enough for the background stuff. I'll demo the sites and then um, we, can, we can have a chat about them live. So this is set up to follow, so I think it's going to push you when it lets me put a URL in. So I'll start with expert. Um, so this is what you saw on the slide. So let's have a look. It's now up to providing access to um, 326,000 resources, and it's growing steadily each day. Um, we probably do need to do a piece of work to have a look at some of the older resources and just to sense check those numbers, because I guess some of the links, uh, well, now we're talking about this sort of size of search engine might not be live anymore. So that, um, there is a piece of work we probably need to do around that, but um, headline stats are that there's around 326,000 resources that you'll be able to access access from here. So um, there's a tag cloud bringing some popular things in. It allows you to subscribe to the RSS feed. It's pretty big now, so I wouldn't re uh, recommend anyone does that. Um, so we, we need, need to split these down, maybe providing access to RSS by, by um, subject or other sensible um, RSS um, options. There's an expert labs options for developers where there's APIs onto the service. So if, if people are interested in that, I won't demo that today, but um, it seems like grabbing the um, embed code to put the search into, in, into websites and also some other API options that were, were built into it. Um, but if I just dem demonstrate, if I can spell. So uh, you can see for this search result, it's brought back uh, what it thinks nearly 2,600 uh, relevant results. And the way that it works is it provides the title of the, the object, um, a description, and um, the name of the author, and also where it's available, the license information um, that's appropriate for the particular resource that, that you're looking at. So for this one, we can see that it's an uh, open university in the UK. Um, psychology in the 21st century, and it's available under um, an attribution non-commercial share-alike license. So it's really clear, and you're able to see 
um, at a glance whether you, you want to engage or at least click once more to have a look at that content. And a click onto that resource would take you to wherever the Open University is storing that particular resource. So this is just um, a metadata search engine providing URLs back to the content. So it's quite a lightweight approach to providing access to materials. Now, um, this is quite a fortuitous search, really, in that um, it's important to, to realize that the information that's available here is really dependent on the information that's in the RSS feed of the institution or individual that's making the content available. So here we can see the Open University doing a really good job to provide a clean title, a clean description in their RSS feed, um, and also um, in the metadata in their RSS feed, um, we were able to track down some license information. I should say as well for, for those that are interested that uh, it runs on um, primarily kind of Dublin Core metadata, although the um, developer that worked on this pack um, did a lot of work to um, tweak the system so that it didn't necessarily have to focus on just what was in um, there, but it's kind of running over the XML and it did a, a lot of work to try and pull things in that weren't necessarily standard, so it, it did do quite a lot of work to um, make sure that we could pull in content. Okay, so I uh, dropped out again, back again, I just saw that someone new joined, so having a few problems with the, um, the platform drop, or my access to the platform dropping in or out, so um, I might disappear, but I'll, I'll come back pretty quickly. Um, so I think what I was saying is that here's an example of one that work, works really well. You can see information clearly. If we scroll down, there might be some examples that aren't. There's quite, quite a lot in here from the, the Open University. Let's have a look at some that aren't necessarily. So we've got a few here as well. So um, here you can see an example of different information that's been provided in the RSS feed. Um, so again, quite a clean title and a good description so we can get a sense of it, but no, no author has been listed in the RSS feed, so it makes it harder for the user really, if that's the Open University or um, MIT or um, Oxford, wherever it might be, um, and you could get a sense, well, actually I might trust that author, I might just be tempted to click it one more time because it gives me a bit more of a sense of who it is and what content it is I'm going to go and have a look at. So um, it does throw up a few issues around the way people use RSS in order to uh, make information available. So some of these you can see with no, no creator set. And it really varies. Sometimes you can search for a term, and a number of pages will have a whole bunch of information in there. Um, but at the minimum level, what you're going to get is the um, title and the description, and then you can, you can choose from there. OK, so um, I th that's really um, there's the search engine. There's a um, few other options to it. So this is related content information that, that you can use if there is some it will provide information on. OK, so that's the main search engine. And I guess uh, just thinking it through as well is that the size of the search engine now is, is such that it's a real benefit. You can find a lot of content in there, but some of the searches are on out to if you search for quite a, if you search for psychology, for example, which I won't do, uh, quite a general term, you can expect a, a big, maybe over 10,000 results being pulled back in. So there is a little bit for us now to think about the next stages for this and how we make that user experience um, better. So people hitting content, maybe being able to see previews of content, splitting down by s um, subjects in a smarter way, related to content in a smarter way. So um, we know there's, there's kind of more work to do here, um, but in terms of the, the search engine and, and, and access to content, we think it's a, a, a pretty strong, strong model, especially around the numbers in there. OK, so um, we'd focus first on um, the resources side of things. And we then decided, well, um, well, one of the biggest barriers to publishing open content at Nottingham is whenever we get content, um, it's real difficulties with clearing copyright around images. And I'm sure that's a shared experience for people that are here that are involved in uh, uh, using content or trying to publish open content. That um, the main, one of the main barriers is that you, you see a lot of working with images. You don't quite know where the images are from. There's no license information available on the image. You don't know what you can do with it. The provenance is difficult to um, establish. So clearance of copyright around images is one of the real drags on our publication process. So what we try to do to help help ourselves and in turn help help others by releasing the tools open was to provide a way for people to search for um, openly licensed images. So the top of the search engine, um, top of this page is, is the search side of things, and the bottom is where you're able to upload your Im images, which we'll talk about in a second. So for example, if we 
um, search for tree. What this is doing is um, going out to search for um, Creative Commons images that are available in Flickr. Um, we did look for some to bring in other services, but it was more difficult to be searched. Okay, so sorry, it's so our five minute kind of uh, drop in and out, so I'll just, just uh, keep going. Um, so I think Kay's agreeing as well that copyright around images is the one of the primary concerns. I think that's what that yes indeed is to celebrate that it, it is a problem. So um, this is this is one of the solutions that we're trying to put in place. So um, sorry, I'll just click back there. Let me get back to the right page. Okay, so I'll do a general search. So this is now searching just to recap for Creative Commons resources that are licensed in, in Flickr. So and it takes a little while because of the size of Flickr that it's running through. So this, um, I think it displays, uh, I can't remember if it's 500 or 200, uh, oh sorry, 1500. So there's easy enough, it displays up to 1500 images. So there is a limit to what it brings back just because of the size of, size of Flickr. If you wanted to um, go off and have a look at the resource on Flickr, which is quite quite useful because then you're able to see more from that particular author, um, see their photo screen streams and all the other stuff that you can do with, with Flickr nowadays. Um, but in terms of this particular um, site and the functionality, we can have a look for the image. So we found the image that we want, and we can either get image with um, attribution in, in its original size, or we um, talked earlier about a tool that we use around um, helping non-technical developers to produce interactive content called Zerti Online Toolkits. So this was built in again to help our staff and, and other worldwide users of toolkits, which which there are many. But what you can do is you can have a look at the the image. Um, you can embed it directly into PowerPoint, so it will open PowerPoint and place the image into your PowerPoint slide for you. You can grab the embed code if you wanted to put it in, into a site. You can see what license it was available under. And then the important I don't know whether that's allowed you to see where it's gone to, so um, what I'll do just to make sure is put the image into here. So um, what you can see is this is the image, and then what it's done, it's embedded another image, so this in effect is an image that's just been added to the bottom of the original image, which stores the Creative Commons license. Um, on the bottom, it provides the name of the copyright holder, the date that the um, image was was published, and um, the URL that the original Im image was saw and um, sourced from. And sorry, that's happened a couple of times now. I don't think I've clicked anything there. So here we go. And um, uh, when we took. So Charles is saying he's still seeing the general searches. Any everyone seeing that? Are you uh, now able to see the image that's there? I put the URL in. So I was hoping. Okay, let me see if. Oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. I've just seen that the follow me box was unchecked. Thank you, Mary Lou. So um, I'll just reset this URL. Is that okay now? Oh, Charles is saying that's okay. So I think that's. Yeah, great. Sorry about that. Um, so this is this is the output. So you um, you search. You've um, got the image, and then you're able to see um, the image with the Creative Commons license, the copyright holder's name, the date that it was published, and the URL. And when we looked at this. Hi, back again. Um, so, for the third time, <laughs> this is the what, what you see is the output. So I won't, won't explain that any further. But um, 
the real usefulness for this is that we can then point people towards this service and instead of just finding things on Google and putting them in PowerPoint slides, um, you can use this service to find images that you want, put them into teaching and learning materials and then as the team that's involved in publishing open resources, it makes our life a, a lot easier but it also means that uh, staff and students have a higher confidence that the images that they're finding are images that are safe to use in terms of copyright. Now, there is a disclaimer on the site that says that if someone's uploaded something that's obviously um, not theirs, I don't know, some stuff from Star Wars maybe, and they're asserting ownership over it, you still do have to apply your common sense and say, um, well, hang on a minute, if I'm not sure about this, I need to contact. Um, um, yes, I'm getting a question in, in the left around, do they have an alt tag? No, uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure about that. Actually, I'll uh, I'll need to uh, need to check that out. I'm not sure that that they do. So I'll I'll check that out. Um, and if they don't, we'll have a look at what we can do in order to approve that for um, accessibility. So yeah, that's definitely something. It is just an image appended as part of an image. I'm not sure that that, that, that they do. Um, but I'll I'll have a look into that. So thanks for raising that one f um, for me. Okay, so, um, and that's it in terms of that particular service really. Now, the, the benefit of that is you can find stuff relatively easily. There's tons of stuff in Flickr, but what we were finding in some of the feedback we got was that although we could find general images, they weren't necessarily easy to find images that were um, specific for subjects, um, because in the search is really dependent on the um, metadata that's available in Flickr, I think in the title, and so depending on what it's been called and what the metadata is, um, we're really dependent on how people have put that into Flickr. So your search, might, it might be looking for something specific, but you're not quite getting what, what you're after. So we thought it probably made sense to then also allow um, people to upload their, their own images. So let me just get this, this set up and I'll um, show you the new piece of functionality that we've built around the expert service. Okay, so um, that's the search engine part. We've now got this upload images. So this this is new again. Now uh, we we got some uh, funding from a GIST Rapid Innovation project, which was ran last year. Um, we bid for um, quite a small amount of funding to enhance this service, and GIST have been really supportive in terms of. Um, helping us kind of promote and get get the word out about about this, but this is the the next phase of expert attribution. So this is where you can upload your own images, either singly or at the moment in in bulk in terms of twenty. We might expand that, but we're we're still quite early days with this, so we're, we're testing and learning a little bit with with this part of the service at the moment. But um, you can come along. So I'm the copyright holder. Uh, you can choose um, which Creative Commons license you might like. Um, I should also say right at the start, we're not 100% um, finished with this yet, so the look and feel will change slightly. Um, and also some of the options in here aren't quite formatted properly, um, but you get the idea that you can choose attribution or one of the other Creative Commons license licenses that are available. It automatically puts the dating for it. If you want to add a comment, you, you can do. Um, that might be useful in terms of um, differentiating in different images that you want to upload. Or okay, so um, back again. Uh, just make sure that everybody's on the same same page again, which I think everybody is. Um, so I'm just about to, to grab an image. So um, I'm uploading an image. This is going to take me through to. Um, I'm not sure you, you can see see it when the desktop opens, but all I'm doing now is just finding a picture that I'd like to upload into the page. I'm going to shamelessly plug the OER 13 conference that has been hosted at Nottingham as part of, as part of the image. Um, but you can see that um, singly you can bring images into here and you can also bring them in bulk. So in, um, you can um, bring zip files in, for example. So if you've got a zip file of images that you wanted to um, have uh, all attributed, you can do that. Um, and then there's various options in here. So you can have a preview of the image In, in a different size, that's opened in a completely different window. So 
Let me just grab that so you can see it. Okay, uh, so yeah, so Jackie's asking about the whether the slides are moving. Yeah, Jackie, sometimes when I'm launching things are opening in other pages, so it doesn't the follow option in the platform. Uh, doesn't follow out to a different page and having to copy the URLs back in so you can you can see where it's going. And so what this is done is you can see similar to the, the ones where you're finding resources, um, I didn't put a, a, a message um, in here so it's just the, the copyright holder and the date and the license that I've chosen but you can get a sense that here you get you're previewing this as well so you're not having to download it. So this is running running uh, at Nottingham. All right, so let me see if that drops back to where we were. It does, and it stores the image, and it, it will do for around 20 minutes, and it clears, because we obviously don't want to be saving everybody's uh, images at Nottingham. Um, but what it allows you to do, um, you can save that to a zip. I won't do this, because you won't be able to see it and follow it, but you can save it, um, and it will save it into a zip folder. Um, you can, again, push it directly into PowerPoint, which is really handy if you've attributed 20 images. You can push them all directly into... Um, into PowerPoint so you don't have to fiddle about with saving them and moving across. And then there are also some published options so you can publish out to Flickr, Facebook and Twitter. And again, I won't, I won't do that today because I think it just, I'll have to copy everything in, but um, it works through the APIs of these services. So the first time that you use it, if you've got the Flickr sign in, um, it will ask you to um, sign into Flickr and to accept that you're happy for expert to push content into your Flickr account. And then it will upload the um, attributed images directly into your Flickr account. The same for Facebook and, and, and the same for Twitter. Um, you can also show you the zip file option, so I did a zip earlier. So you can see, and this might take a little while because what we, it kind of um, uploads them in one so we're not hammering our web server which is again something we might look at depending on kind of how big the the, um, the system and service requirements grow. Um, but kind of again, like I said at the start, we're testing and learning a little bit with, with this one. Um, so that's taking a little bit longer than it normally does, but I'm sure it'll sort itself out. You get the idea that you can then pull in a whole host of images into into the service, and then you could, if you wanted to, push all of those in. Okay, um, back again. Um, so let's just have a, a little look at some other of the um, options that we have in here. Let me grab that. Um, zip file again. So that's uploading the, the zip file. This just helps have a look at a couple of the um, advanced options. Great. So what you can do if you want to, and you should really do this before we upload, you can choose your colour palette. So if you're not happy with the background and, and the text colour in the background, you can if you want to change them. Uh, you do that at your own risk. I've seen some pretty horrendous uh, foregrounds and backgrounds in the uh, in the test that we did, but um, some people thought that was a good service to have, and it is really if you wanted to match the particular backgrounds, but um, it does mean that people um, get, get choice on, on what, they, what they go for, so uh, you just need to be a little bit careful with that. Um, you can if you want to. Um, add an image from, from URL, so if you know something exists out on the web, you can pull that in to have it attributed using the service as well. So that's quite a handy service if you know where, where something lives. And the advanced options that we've got in here um, is you can edit comments by page. So um, imagine you've got your 20 images or how many images you want and you want a different um, comment adding to each of them. It might be a different, um, a different series of comments that you want for the collection that you've got, you can do that, or you can have the comment added, um, the main comment on the page added to all of the images. So it's really, again, um, some of this we're not sure whether that will be used or um, whether it would be a popular service, but it's one of those things that we thought might be useful to, to put in there and allow people to, um, to make use of it. Um, and really, we've seen some practical uses for this already. So our um, vet school are really active in open publication. And one of the things that they were, were doing is um, they were using the, the previous um, attribution service that we've got. They were saving their items into Flickr, 
and then they were putting a u unique, well, a, a, as unique as you can get in terms of putting a, um, a distinct, is a better word, a distinct title um, in um, in the title field of Flickr, so they could find their images and grab an image with the Creative Commons license on the bottom of it. So this tool kind of gets around that problem that you don't have to do it that way, and you can come directly to a service where you can upload your images. Um, get a Creative Commons license on them and push them out to various social media as well as grabbing them on, onto your drive or into PowerPoint. So um, that's really what we're, we're about, trying to make tools that make lives easier for the people that work at Nottingham and in turn when we release those openly and share them hopefully make lives easier for people um, in, in other institutions or in other organisations as well. So that, that's the, the kind of demo side of things, I guess. Um, there are the URLs. Here's one f further shameless plug of um, the OER 13 conference, uh, which was the combined open courseware conference last year um, in Cambridge, which is in, in Nottingham this year. It's not been um, fully organised by us. We're part of the organising committee. You might be able to make that um, or not, but if you could, that would be fantastic. And that, that's about it from me, really. So um, I guess the, the etiquette is to say, if you've got any questions, more than happy to answer them, or um, I'll kind of leave that for the Open Education guy, Week guys as well to moderate if, we're, if we haven't got time for that. So um, thanks for your time and your patience with dropping in and out. And has anyone got any questions? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear. Um, I sorry, dropped in, in and out again. Yeah. Um, so um, I know Jim's got his hand up. I see. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Steve, I just was curious. Um, your your search engine. Is it primarily search institutions of higher education that that have RSS feeds plus things like Flickr, or does it go out and search the whole the whole web? Uh, yeah, it's primarily looking for um, education content. So we started with higher education institutions with, with RSS feeds. There'll be some other stuff in there, and um, it was. A manual process for Pat the developer to go out and, and look for feeds um, initially, but yeah, in the main it will be higher education and education-based content. It's not looking to grab stuff from the whole web. Okay, so so like when you were talking about Flickr, you'll actually go go target Flickr, but you may not search other. Um, other either repositories or referatories uh, with open well, open education content, or would those show up in your search somehow? Um, yeah. So on the on the, res the the first expert search that I showed you, the the resources one, uh, that's searching for all all content, but not looking for images. And the second search, which was image based, that's the one that targets Flickr to to look for images, but the, the general expert search, the, f the first one that was returning thousands of um, options, and when we looked at cognitive psychology as the search, that's content rather than just images. So that could be anything from uh, learning objects to um, module outlines, selection notes, whatever it might be that people are releasing. Okay, and um, just one other quick question is, um, uh, can you explain the reason why you use the NC? Um, in your in your Creative Commons license, and this is CC by NCSA, so uh, non-commercial, share alike. Um, yeah, that, that was the decision that we we made as a university when we first got into OER a number of years ago. Um, I know there's quite a debate at the moment around whether non-commercials is kind of a, a good option or an open option, but it's the one that we we went for um, a number of years ago, um, based around kind of working, seeing the education sector at the time as, the, as a non-commercial entity, 
we've not really had any issues with people not being able to use our content in the in the context that they want. But I do do acknowledge that there's a, a debate at the moment about how open the non-commercial licenses are. Okay, thank you. No worries, thanks, Jim. Okay, I don't know if there are any other questions. Doesn't look like it, so I will say thank you very much for your patience again for the the thing uh, dropping in and out. Thanks a lot for for coming. It's been good to talk to everybody. Um, if you do want to get in touch, um, Stephen Stapleton at um, the University of Nottingham, I'll drop my email address into the chat just to conclude. And if anyone wants to talk, how we are or openness at any time, feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Cheers. <laughs>